Uh, we have a couple of technical difficulties. We're just waiting for Councillor Kleiber to call in. There was just some audio issues uh, with the meeting. And so we will wait. Ms. Shaw, have we got Councillor Kleiber? We'll just give it a minute to see if we can't get Councillor Kleiber connected. Councillor Kleiber, are you able to hear us now? No? Okay, I think I'm just going to get us started here um, and see if we can't uh, get through at least a little bit. Ms. Shaw, are you still there? I am, Madam Mayor. Okay, and is Councillor Kleiber trying to call in? I believe she's just logged in. Okay. Okay, I'm called in, but I can't hear any. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, I'm able to hear you. People are having trouble on YouTube too. They can't see anything. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to have to hold my tongue because I can't um, mute. I'm on a business phone. <laughs> so I'll just be quiet. Okay. Um, and then use the chat feature um, so we can do that as well or Ms. Shaw can mute us as well when we're not talking so that's no problem. All right I'm glad we got everybody with us and um, like I said we're live on YouTube for the special meeting for this evening um, and just before um, I'm going to call the meeting to order be it resolved that the meeting be called to order and that the agenda of the meeting be adopted as circulated. Can I have a move please? Moved by Councillor Link, seconded by Councillor Pregg, any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? In favor. Opposed, and that is carried. All right, just before I talk about the addendums, I just wanted to discuss procedure. Uh, I know at the last meeting there were some questions about um, discussion being limited to five minutes. So I was just going to have uh, Ms. Shaw pull up um, our current procedural bylaw, 17.5. Uh, um, and just uh, to just to remind everybody about conduct for the meeting of not interrupting section 17 deals with conducts at our council meetings. Um, every member previous to speaking addressed through the chair uh, two or more members address the chair at the same time the chair shall name the member who's to speak and then there was questions around. Um, five minutes speaking to the question, meaning the resolution no member shall speak to the question or in reply for longer than five minutes without approval of council. So that's in our existing procedural. And just as we move to go ahead with the meeting, um, I will follow the procedure that we followed last time where we each go around um, and, and are able to speak to the resolution for five minutes. All right, um, we have for item three, addendums to the agenda this evening. Um, we want to apologize, but this is a last minute time sensitive item that was asked to be added by the fire chief. Addendum 4.4 is a one-time fire protection grant. Um, and so the fire chief needs a resolution from council for Friday, otherwise we would not be adding last minute addendums. Can I have a mover please to uh, approve? Councillor Buschetti, a seconder. Councillor Pregg, any discussion on the addendum? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? In favor. Opposed, carry, thank you. All right, our first item for this evening is 4.1, the Federal Safe Restart Operating Grant. And uh, Mr. CAO, if you're ready, I will turn that over to you to discuss and update the council. Good evening, council. Um, first item on the agenda tonight is the Federal Safe Restart Operating Grant. So um, way back in, in March, uh, when we started this journey on, on COVID, that uh, a number of 
times council had, had talked about, uh, uh, you know, COVID expenses that we were incurring and, and uh, you know, I told council we were staying within our, our budget guidelines, but as, as COVID continued, I, uh, I, I, at another point, I suggested that I, I, I seen the opportunity where government would probably uh, uh, give grants to the municipalities to cover COVID expenses. So in this case, uh, we do have a, well, the Federal Safe Restart Operating Grant. The money was put into our account uh, last week on, on the day before Halloween, and it's a grant for $321,000. 321,380.93, so over $321,000. Um, what we are doing now is we'll be looking for, uh, uh, I've asked our, our acting director of finance to gather all the areas that are COVID related to that add additional expenses for uh, for our RM. So those, there's a wide range of those uh, expenses. It would be plexiglass uh, at, at the RM buildings, uh, fire department having to to have new requirements or or drive through tax uh, booth because we're limited to the amount of people that we could take in the RM office. We've lost revenue at the Sonova Center because uh, we weren't able to have all our programs and uh, the list goes on and on videoing our meetings because people aren't allowed into the RM office. Of, in, in fact, for, for instance, is we're in a code red situation now. Uh, we've had to upgrade computers, uh, buy software so we could do meetings like this. So, so there's a number of expenses. I've asked uh, Director Rempel to gather our expenses. We will come back uh, either at, by the end of November or the start of December, report back to council. But those are expenses. are and you know they could last uh, a year here with uh, COVID-19 moving forward. So it's a, a federal government allocation. There was 19 billion dollars distributed across the uh, the country and 321 thousand dollars has come to us. Thank you Mayor. Thank you Mr. CEO. I will go around the table and see if there are any questions for you. Councillor Link, any questions for our CAO? No, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Buschetti, any questions for the CAO? No, thank you. Okay. Councillor Kleiber, any questions? No questions at this time. Thank you. And Councillor Bragg, any questions? No. Great. Thank you, Mr. CAO. I appreciate the update and, uh, and it'll be good to have our expenses covered. All right, we are on to item 4.2, COVID-19 code red, and I will pass that uh, back on to the CAO um, and just letting council know that uh, Friday afternoon, um, myself and mayors and reeds of the metropolitan region participated in a phone call with Minister Squires um, just prior to um, Dr. Rusin's uh, public announcement of code red. Um, where they let us know that um, there would be a code red coming into effect. And in the afternoon of the same day, um, our CAO participated in a meeting regarding the regulations with CAOs from the region. So um, just to up count, update council on, uh, on the restrictions uh, that are now in effect and how that impacts us in West St. Paul. Mr. CAO. Yeah, so as we all know that uh, the province uh, rapidly went into a code red situation that was announced on Friday. Uh, it started today and uh, you know there's there's been uh, accelerated uh, cases in in the metro region in a, a number of deaths. Uh, you know there's been a number at the care homes. Um, we received uh, our, our, our information directly from uh, the minister on Friday afternoon. I was on meetings uh, in the afternoon with the province, with the mayor, and then at another meeting with the deputy minister at 4:30 to 5:30 on Friday. And 
during the afternoon on Friday, we announced that the the uh, uh, following the guidance of, of the province and and watching what uh, our, our brother and sister RMs were doing, we we uh, shut down our office at four o'clock. Uh, we can be reached. We are working out of the office. We are use, using the uh, separation rules. Uh, all staff is in. We are staying to our own desk. We have masks on whenever we we uh, move around the office. So we are following all the rules, but we announced that these, the office would be closed uh, once again at 4 p.m. on Friday. Uh, the majority of offices in the region on Friday afternoon were closing. And uh, I, I follow up today, uh, the ones that hadn't closed uh, seem to be following the in response. Uh, we, we also uh, have the Sonova Center. We had a recommendation from our our uh, emergency uh, coordinator, and uh, we we received information that our nursery school that runs out of uh, 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 out of Sonova can continue to run. So we are allowing them access now uh, to the Sonova Center as as per provincial. Uh, outlines that the following indoor sporting or recreational facilities must be closed while these orders are in effect. So hockey and curling rinks, volleyball and basketball courts, indoor soccer fields, squash, racquetball, handball, tennis, archery and rifle, bowling, indoor skating parks, and on and on. Uh, so we have suspended operations uh, for the time being at the Sonova Center and we know that child care centers and child care homes may open and provide care to children in accordance with the Community Child Care Standards Act. So we have shut buildings. Um, and then I, uh, I'll i take questions from uh, council if there's any. But we also, I'm asking council uh, for resolution because that's what we've been doing that we can uh, we can have these buildings closed. Thank you, Mr. CAO. I will go around the virtual council table here and see if there are any questions for you. Councillor Bruschetti, any questions for the CAO? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for the CAO? No, no questions. Thank you. Councillor Prague, any questions? No questions. Thank you. And Councillor Link, any questions for the CAO? No questions. Thank you. Um, and I, I just want to thank Ken, our, our Azaransky, our uh, emergency measures coordinator, for um, providing a response on Friday right, of, right away as well, and his recommendation. And he's been staying on top of um, the prevention, the provincial public health orders, um, as well as the state of emergency and what's coming out of the province. So um, we, we want to thank him for helping us make good decisions here. Um, the only comment I would add. Um, that was concerning is the province is making suggestions about helping to enforce these public health orders. Um, and so I don't know if you want to speak a little bit to that, Mr. CAO. Um, it's a little bit concerning. We don't have the resources to be running around handing out tickets. So maybe that's something that you want to speak to. Yes, so part of the, the province is uh, well, the big push on Friday for all these other things were, that were happening were to have all the municipal bylaw uh, resources put into uh, giving tickets out on behalf of the province to people that weren't obeying the rules. Uh, for 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 some municipalities, towns, and and small cities, uh, they have you know dedicated bylaw enforcement officers. Uh, our situation is a little bit different. We don't have, uh, I believe, any personnel that that are available to be. Uh, handing out tickets and, and tracking down people that that aren't obeying the, the rules and under the code red. In saying that we are still uh, we are still open to uh, ideas or suggestions that the province has in doing this. We still may uh, if it becomes necessary, we still may look at redeploying uh, staff into that area, but uh, we're going to wait for further notice from the province. One of the things that I asked for uh, from the province in regards to this is that uh, we needed uh, documentation, we needed training, we needed uh, 
some type of identification uniform uh, protests going on. So there's, and, and, and other uh, municipalities were agreeing this was on a, on a, a, a province-wide call. So there was uh, about 70 uh, uh, RMs in cities and towns on deploying. But uh, I just wanted uh, a council to know that some of our focus may be going to uh, help these rules. The fines are fairly high and uh, that uh, that the province has indicated that there would be um, some cost sharing, but there was a number of questions from, from a number of municipalities. And certainly uh, some of the bigger municipalities and cities and towns that are involved and have, uh, you know, downtown areas that would would see uh, more busier bylaw enforcement than enforcement officers. Uh, they're more sophisticated than, than a lot of the RMs are, so they put a lot of questions uh, to the province, and we'll be waiting for the province to come back uh, with the next phase of what's going to take place in, in regards to enforcement. Thank you, Mr. CEO, for the update. I think the last thing our residents want us to be doing is handing out $1,200 tickets um, for five parents, six parents standing at the play structure area. So hopefully our, our residents have been extremely compliant and haven't been, have been listening to the public health orders. So hopefully we don't have to go in that direction. That's definitely not something that we want to be doing. 4.3, we have our RM building closures and our CAO spoke to that uh, just briefly. Um, and so I'm, I think maybe I'll just go around the table and see if there are any questions for the CAO about the closures. This is a resolution from council to uh, to have that clo have the closures. Um, and maybe I'll read the resolution first, and then we can discuss it if there's any questions about those closures. Whereas the World Health Organization has declared the COVID-19 virus a global pandemic on March 11th, 2020. And whereas the province of Manitoba has declared a state of emergency on March 20th, 2020, and whereas the province of Manitoba, under the authority of the Emergency Measures Act, has moved the Winnipeg metro region to code red on the pandemic response system, effective November 2nd, 2020, and whereas the rural municipality of West St. Paul Municipal Emergency Coordinator has recommended that municipality take precautions to ensure business continuity during COVID-19 pandemic, and to minimize the risk of exposure to COVID-19. And whereas the Royal Municipality of West St. Paul Emergency Coordinator has recommended that the municipality close municipal buildings to the public and suspend recreation programming. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Royal Municipality of West St. Paul close municipal buildings to the public and suspend recreation programming until such time as the COVID-19 pandemic does not pose a significant health and safety risk. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded by Councillor Buschetti, and I'll just go around the table see if there is any discussion on that. And I am starting with Councillor Prague. Uh, sorry, yep, Councillor Kleiber. Uh, any comments, questions on the RM building closures? I think it's a um, reasonable uh, thing to do considering we're in the pandemic, so. Thank you. Councillor Prague, any comments, questions for discussion on the closures? I think it's the right thing to do. We have to follow what the province is saying to stop this pandemic. Thank you. Councillor Link, any questions, comment on the building closures? No, no questions. Thank you. And Councillor Buschetti, any questions or comments on the building? No, thanks. Thank you. I, I agree. I think it's um, it's a responsible thing to do. Many municipalities have, and they've got their notices up, and uh, it's just ensuring that our residents are safe and that our staff are safe, and we need to keep doing business. So, a uh, responsible thing to do. And thanks again to our uh, uh, municipal emergencies coordinator, Mr. Azaransky. So, hearing and seeing no further discussion, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. All right. And we have uh, the addendum that was added, item 4.4, .4, a one-time fire protection grant. And I will turn that over to the CAO to, uh, to comment on that grant and inform council. 
Hi, Council. Um, I, I got a call from our fire chief last week that uh, that, uh, that there was a grant out by the, the, the province. They had approached the fire departments. It's the province of Manitoba, the Department of Municipal Relations, and the officer of uh, the fire commissioner have announced a one-time fire protection grant of $5 million. The fire protection grant provides funding support to enhance fire protection and emergency responses services within local communities. So when the chief and I was at our regular meeting that we talked about this, uh, he hadn't had a, a chance to, to uh, get a good look at this yet. And I said, listen, the funding runs from 25% to 100%. So I, I, I got him on this right away and, and said, uh, start reviewing and start writing the grant. And he was excited to do that. And, uh, you know, let's make sure that we get it in. And, and the deadline was this week. So you can imagine uh, in our offices and in the provincial offices and probably in, in uh, your offices, in your homes, things aren't aren't uh, running like they used to. So things could happen right away. Grants could come on board right away. So this came on board. But what we didn't know that, uh, what the chief didn't know at the time is that we needed a, a resolution from council to move ahead with this. So that's why it's uh, appearing at the last minute today. Uh, I'll just read out with the West St. Paul Fire Department will submit a pro proposal for funding for the following. So remember, I told him to get as many things on that he, he could because uh, funding could be up to 100% and we didn't want to leave any dollars on the table. So he's, uh, he's and, and, and you know, we're hoping for if we submit six things that it go at one. So he submitted for a four man track side by side with bump unit, two new thermal imaging cameras, four, an SCBA bottle fill filling system for the fire hall, five. Five new SCBAs with cylinders and pack tracker, and number six, a 26-foot fire prevention public education trailer. And uh, so we are looking for a, a, a resolution tonight. Be it resolved that the Council of RM of West St. Paul support the West St. Paul Fire Department proposal for funding under the Fire Protection Grant. Great, thank you, Mr. CAO. And I will just go around the virtual table and see if there are any questions for you, Councillor Prague. Any questions for the CAO? No questions. Thank you, Councillor Link. Any questions? I didn't hear the first item. Um, the, uh, the sound was kind of going in and out for me. I don't know about any of you others. Mr. CEO, if you just want to mention the first item on the list. Can you hear me? The first item was a four man tracked side by side with pump unit. And what is that? I, I don't understand what that unit is or does. And it it's like a quad with tracks, like an, uh, uh, something like the one the Public Works got, I guess, right? Okay. <laughs> And, and what would it be used for? I don't get it. Sorry. Well, pretty straightforward answer. It would be used for fighting fires. Okay. All right. Thank you. Councillor Bruschetti, any questions, comments on the request? No, no thanks. And Councillor Kleiber. Line. Oh, am I? I hear unmuted. Oh, now we can can yep, you hear we me can now? Hear you. Okay. Yes. Um, so if we can uh, knock off some items from our budget, uh, capital asset budget, that would be great. So if we can get some of these things through, it would be great. Let's hope we do. Okay, you can mute me now. <laughs> Councillor Prague? 
So this is on the side for um, Councillor Kleiber to go on the wheel. I think that's what's happening. I had that problem before. And so if she goes on the wheel, she'll set the song down. You know, to give her holding that phone is very uncomfortable. Yes. Thanks for the technical help. I know we're always uh, in a challenge here with that. So Councillor Craig is telling you to hit the wheel on the top for audio. So I think Councillor Kleiber's been working on it, but. And then it helps you turn on your audio. Thanks, Councillor Craig. Um, I, I agree on this item. I'm supportive of that. I think it's great that we're applying for any grant money that we can and that the fire chief was so quickly able to put a request together. And uh, I hate to see items added to agendas last minute. It's hard for us to review them, but um, this is excellent to get that in. I do notice a couple of the items on here are items that were requested at budget time and not approved by council. Um, so this gives them an opportunity and, and he's motivated to submit and, and get additional things that weren't possibly uh, approved by us for this year and maybe next year. So um, great work taking the initiative there. On, yes, yeah, and thanks for the reminder. Yeah, we uh, the fire department uh, fighting a huge fire on uh, Friday and Saturday, it extended into the weekend um, off of Blackdale. So um, we appreciate the work that they're doing. Uh, and so in, in the midst of the fighting a huge fire in our community, putting together grant requests, and we've got a dedicated fire department. So thank you to that, to all of them. I will read the resolution. Be it resolved that Council of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul support the West St. Paul Fire Department's proposal for funding under the Fire Protection Grant. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bruschetti, seconded Councillor Kleiber. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. All right, that takes us to item 5.1, third reading of the burning bylaw. And uh, Ms. Shaw, I think maybe I would just turn it over to you. The one change that we, uh, we made a couple of changes between the second and third reading uh, were documented and available for council. Maybe I can just turn that over to you to discuss what the last changes were. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and good evening, council. Um, so the current bylaw, as you know, we've discussed, uh, uh, was created for the prevention and control of fires within the municipality and was passed in 2015. This proposed bylaw has been updated to be consistent with new zoning definitions and removes redundancies and updates formatting. This bylaw received second reading on October 26 with the following amendments. We added a definition of spark arrestor and we added the text up to and plus any applicable cost to clause 13.1. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Shaw. All right, I will go around the council table and see if there are any comments um, for discussion on this. And I'm starting back with Councillor Link. I apologize, could you go on to um, Councillor Brissetti, on my note, I have just misplaced my note temporarily. Sure. Councillor Brissetti, are you ready? Yeah, I have no questions. We've already discussed it. We asked for those changes, so. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any comments on the burning bylaw? Okay, I'm unmuted now. <laughs> I have no questions or comments on the burning bylaw. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kleiber looks frozen. Councillor Kleiber, are you able to hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Councillor Craig, any comments on the burning bylaw? So we discussed yep, I can hear you now. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Craig and Councillor Link. I'm back to you. Any comments on the burning bylaw? Yeah, just just a little typo in spark arrester. I think the word need should be needed of a non-combustible material needed to prevent the emission. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, sorry, Councillor Link, I'm just going to read that out. Uh, the definition, spark arrestor, refers to the grill or mesh fire 
receptacles covering with openings no larger than 12 millimeters, half an inch, and constructed of a non-combustible material needed, you're saying, to yeah. prevent the emission of any flammable debris from any source of combustion. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments, Councillor Link? No, thank nope. you. Okay. Thank you. So hearing and seeing no further comments then, I will read the resolution. Be it resolved that bylaw 2020-11, being a bylaw of the Real Municipality of West St. Paul, for the prevention and the control of fires with, within the municipality and repeal bylaw 2015-16 be read a third and final time, signed, sealed, and therefore passed as a bylaw of the Real Municipality of West St. Paul. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Prag, seconded Councillor Buschetti. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. All right, 5.2, we have third reading of bylaw 2020-14, the solid waste bylaw. And I will turn that back over to you, Ms. Shaw, to discuss the changes since the second reading. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, as council knows, the current solid base Solid Waste Bylaw was created to regulate and establish controls over the residential storage, collection, removal, and disposal of solid waste, recyclables, and yard waste. It received third reading in 2016. The Municipal Garbage and Recycling Collection contracts end January 31st, 2021. The municipality will tender their garbage and recycling and yard waste collection under a single contract going forward. The solid waste bylaw has been updated to reflect uh, the garbage recycling and yard waste collection service that the municipality will provide under this new contract and the proposed bylaw updates definitions, language and removes redundancies. This bylaw also received second reading on October 26 with the following amendments adding or the result of owners or occupiers neglect and or willful damage to clause 8.7a and deleting clause 8.7b. Uh, deleting clause 10.2, deleting surplus materials from clause 13.11, and replacing the text and costs with plus applicable costs in item 17.0. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Shaw. I will go around the virtual table here and see if there are any comments, questions. I'll start with Councillor Buschetti. Any comments for discussion on the solid waste bylaw? No, I already did it on the second round. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kleiber? You have to unmute me. Am I unmuted? Am I unmuted? Yep. You're good. Okay. Um, just so that uh, we administration knows I'm having people uh, text me and tell me that they're having a lot of trouble on the audio uh, on YouTube live, so I might be the only one. Um, I have no comments on this. Um, Councillor Buschetti and I uh, had a situation this weekend and uh, with the waste bylaw and uh, I'll tell you it's very difficult to enforce these bylaws um, um, on property and uh, again you know making council aware that where we have holding tanks and we could have septic fields that we keep on those septic fields because um, People in uh, in our wards are du still dumping sewage into the into the creek, and this and this one was right into Grassmere Creek. So, um, you know, I, I I hope that this puts some teeth into it, but uh, just something we should keep in in the back of our minds in planning too. So that's my comment there. And uh, Councillor Link, I'll go to you. Thank you. I'm still wondering about the wording of 1311. If we could go to that. Oh, passed it. 
Okay. It, it says no person carrying on building operations or alterations shall deposit on any street lane or public place any earth rubbish or other garbage other than surplus materials. It reads as if it's okay to put surplus materials on any street, lane, or public place. Is That's not what it should read, should it? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I could address that comment if you like. Um, we see this often in um, in areas where there is uh, improvements happening on a property. It uh, occurs on a temporary basis, and and this allows for that, um, which is usually monitored very closely by our community services officer. Okay, so it means that someone who is building or renovating can put surplus materials on public property. Madam Mayor, we see this um, most often with um, some, some say some gravel uh, that is just to the side of the property. It usually happens on the road. It's clearly marked. Um, sometimes we see this with um, topsoil. And it, as I said, it's usually a, a short-term solution while there are improvements to the property. Okay, thank you for clarifying because I have had complaints about people putting um, putting uh, building materials on the roads, and I, I I I was I'm sorry, but I wasn't aware of this. So the next time I get a complaint, I can reply that surplus materials can be stored short term on public roads. Is that correct? It's in, in compliance with the bylaw and, and staff would be able to check that it's safe um, and not causing any any danger to the community on the road. Okay. Um, I also don't see the change. Maybe I just don't see the change in um, 16.1. Um, to me, it still, it still needs clarification on the meaning. Uh, in the second part, I could address that. Yeah, what um, I consulted with our um, current contractor. Uh, we discussed the language here. So what we have added, um, as was suggested uh, by uh, council, were two things um, for um, for this was that we put garbage as defined in subsection 2.1 council had some concerns that this was not um, enough of a um, a descriptive um, under garbage um, there was no suggestions for clarifying uh, we felt that it was fairly clear that you may not um, deposit these things unless you are doing it in a manner that is allowed under the environment act um, we f we felt that there was not any language that could could simplify this clause. Does that answer your question, Councillor? Fair enough. Now then, um, in section, I thought we, I can't remember what other people thought about section five one. That's about people not getting service because. Uh, garbage pickup service. It can't be provided, but they get no rebate because uh, they're not getting the service. And and in contrast to 8.3, if you get extra, say, an extra garbage container, then you're going to pay extra. Um, did anybody else have a problem with the fairness of if you're not getting the service, you don't get any kind of rebate. It's, you're not getting the service because it can't be provided. 
Anybody else uh, consider that fair or not fair? So, Ms. Shaw, can I just have you speak to what it, what that what the intent is there and what is what that is referring to? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this clause has um, some language that says that if a, a parcel cannot be safely, efficiently, or legally serviced, that the municipality shall exclude that parcel from servicing and that they would be responsible for their um, collection um, on, on their own. Um, and Councillor Link is right. We do not speak to refunding um, any amount from the tax. So that things that that might cover could be if it's not safe because um, what dogs are attacking the drivers or if they can't, if it's too tight to get in um, a, a multifamily area that they would have to take care of taking the garbage out from large bins themselves. And that's correct. We leave it broad um, simply because we cannot imagine every scenario that that could make a parcel unsafe um, to service. Um, so, so that's why the language is broad here, um, and and that's that's how we've presented the bylaw for council. Do people who get excluded are they informed that they're being excluded? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I can address that. As you see in the bylaw. Has anyone ever been? Uh, yes, uh, we do have uh, one property right now that is excluded from service. Uh, and they were, of course, notified um, prior to the exclusion. You're on mute, Councillor Link. Sorry, I see that others don't see any fairness issue in, uh, in between these two sections. I'm the only one, okay. I'll drop it. Those are all the questions. I, I just would just like to refer to the CAO on the on the comments about the raw sewage going into ditches. That's something that we've been working on, and sadly couldn't be covered by our solid waste bylaw. And, and Mr. CAO, can I have you speak to the process there? Homes putting gray water into ditches, or in this case that that I've heard tonight, right into the grass near drain. Uh, that is a provincial issue. That should be reported to uh, conservation. If it is reported to the RM office, we will call the province and report it to conservation. Uh, we can provide the number, uh, we can put an email blast out. Um, I, I think the number is probably on uh, the newsletter or uh, uh, another, for sure it's on our website. So just to be clear, if there is gray water or sewage going into a ditch or the grass mirror drain, that is a provincial issue. They have uh, teams in conservation that will follow up on this or are supposed to follow up on this, and we cannot enforce that. That is not up to us to enforce. It's very frustrating, and I've spoken with our MLA about this, um, and both the CEO and I, to uh, put pressure on conservation to enforce these. We've spent millions of dollars in West St. Paul bringing wastewater into our community and to see people um, negligently pumping out raw sewage into ditches. And, and now if, if they are, people are in fact dumping into the creek, um, it is disgusting and the province needs to do their part. It's their jurisdiction and we've certainly been putting pressure on them. Um, our staff, our bylaw, hasn't been sit sitting idly by. They've been taking pictures. They've been submitting video to the province. Um, they have come in after hours to take video and photos to submit and make it easier for conservation. So it's very frustrating um, and, and we're certainly putting pressure on. I see no further discussion. I'm gonna read the resolution for the solid waste bylaw. 
Be it resolved that bylaw 202014, being a bylaw of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul to regulate and establish controls over the residential storage, collection, removal, and disposal of solid waste, recyclables, and yard waste, and to repeal bylaw 2015-21, be read a third and final time, signed, sealed, and therefore passed as a bylaw of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bruschetti, seconded. Councillor Prague. Any further discussion on this item? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. And our final bylaw for this evening to discuss is third reading of bylaw 2020-13, our procedural bylaw. And I will turn that back to you. Uh, Ms. Shaw to discuss the changes that have been made since the second reading. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The current procedures bylaw received third reading on January 10th, 2019. The bylaw was created to regulate the proceedings and conduct of council and committees. The Municipal Act requires that council establish their rules of procedure by bylaw and review the bylaw at least once during its term of office. This procedures bylaw should be updated to include administrative changes and suggestions resulting from the review of the procedures bylaw by municipal lawyer Maria Grande. The bylaw was also updated to remove redundancies and update formatting. This bylaw received second reading with the following amendment in item 7.3 language uh, the mayor must provide a reason in writing if an agenda request is not supported thank you mayor thank you Ms. Shaw I will go around the table for discussion uh, Councillor Clyder any discussion on this procedure uh, am I off mute can you hear me yes. okay Yes. First, I'm going to respond to some um, comments that were made at the last meeting and I wasn't able to speak again. So I'm going to address those issues. Uh, at the last meeting, um, it was said that um, I had a conflict of interest or there was a conflict of interest. First, I'm going to say this. Um, section 7.3 that is being added requires a majority to agree on an agenda item which constitutes a quorum outside a regular meeting and is in violation of the uh, Municipal Act. Second, the agenda item process is being changed because of a violation of our original procedural bylaw. And, and uh, previously, an agenda item could not be refused. It could only be deferred for one meeting. So now suddenly the bylaw is being changed. With respect to my conflict of interest, as many residents know, I have a lawsuit against Seven Oaks School Division and the RM of West St. Paul. They did not inform residents properly for the conditional use that was passed by council and a previous council. And this decision was supported by the ombudsman. The lawsuit has been set aside for the time being while I've been on council. I've tried to work collaboratively and cooperatively with the RN to resolve some final issues. I've asked the mayor and the CAO to enforce the DA as they should and to have the Seven Oaks School Division plant the 50 trees that were promised as a buffer zone. That was for Ward 4, 1, and 3. I've never asked for this item to be placed on the agenda. In fact, on December 11th, and I have the email here, I was informed that Seven Oaks would be asking for construction extension at the December 13th planning meeting, 2018. Minutes are posted on our website. The mayor sent an email and asked me to recuse myself from the vote. In fact, our lawyer attended council chambers for an educational briefing and gave me legal advice to recuse myself. At that time, I sent the mayor an email and asked her if she would ask some questions regarding the additional 50 trees that were, were to be planted as a buffer zone. I asked her if we could get a deadline for the planting. The mayor responded by email, yes, we can definitely ask about the trees and a planned date of completion, December 11, 6.45 p.m. I reiterate, I have never asked for this to be placed on the agenda. And I restate that there is no planned date of completion and the 50 trees have not been planted to date. With respect to the two agenda items I requested that were not placed on the agenda and breached our procedural bylaw. The first was to discuss why the River Springs residents had not received a copy of the development agreement. Under the Freedom of Information Act, residents can access this information for a small fee or they can go to land titles office. 
Since information is public, there should be no reason to withhold the developed agreement from residents. The mayor quotes policy and processes, but even if these processes are followed, in the end, the residents will have the DA. If the agreement is already signed, there's no reason to withhold this. The second eight, uh, agenda request was for a resident who had been working with the RM over five weeks res to resolve the stockpiling issue of mud on Minnehaha. The resident sent a letter to council complaining they were being run around in circles and were getting nowhere for over five weeks. The resident asked for the help of council to resolve the issue. I asked for this item to be on the agenda so we can get an update and discuss the issues that were surrounding this complaint. Uh, it was stated that this was a request for service and therefore did not, it was not warranted on the agenda. The bylaw did not and does not specify that request for service cannot be discussed on the agenda. In fact, a request for service was discussed by Council under General Planning Matters, September 13, 2020, CT 2250358 under Councillor Prague's ward. The procedural bylaw has now been changed so that the minority and council can no longer request agenda items that are not to the liking of the mayor. The terms are being used are inappropriate and agenda items for which we have not received proper definition. However, the mayor has announced she will provide us with a written response as to why we are not being put on the agenda. I hope that it will not be termed as private and confidential so it can be shared with residents. I believe that the re revision of this bylaw is really an attempt to silence certain members of council. With respect to revision 7.5 and 9.27, question and answer. The mayor, when we started our term, was agreeable to a question and answer period that did not restrict questions. If administration did not have an answer, they would get back to the resident by email or telephone call. Now, this has been changed on the, that only questions can be asked regarding the agenda. If residents would like to have other questions asked, they must attend coffee house, as we heard at the second reading. But coffee house has been canceled since March 2020, and therefore residents cannot ask questions, and it is unknown as to when this will resume. Therefore, residents without a computer only have one other alternative, and that is to phone the mayor. And I've had complaints that people are phoning, and voice boxes are full and they're not getting their calls returned. Those that do have computers do have the ability to send an email and let's hope that we respect those emails and respond on those issues. However, in some cases they have not received responses. So this new revision of question and answer now censors the resident and limits the resident once again from asking about certain issues in the RM. Both councillors and residents are censored from their views or from asking questions, which is not transparency. The revision of removing a remark during extension is also censoring councillors. The current mayor abstained 42 times, as I noted previously, and now she has stated she's doing better by removing this mechanism for current council. The abstention with the remark is an opportunity for a councillor to state inconsistencies in planning or procedures especially when a councillor is voting in the minority on council. And although we say there's no minority, there is. When the mayor was a councillor and had a voted by her majority, she used abstentions for her disagreements with policies or procedures. But now that will not extend that same courtesy to current council. Plain and simple, in my opinion, this is censorship and the silencing of council members. Moreover, these revisions are not good governance and exceed the jurisdiction of the council with respect to fairness and inclusiveness. Under Code of Conduct 6.2 and 7.6, these behaviors are in violation of the codes and in violation of the Municipal Act 382.1. Thank you. Councillor you, you can mute me again. Councillor Prague, any, any comments on that? Okay. Councillor Link, any comments on the bylaw? Yes, I have. I uh, want to comment again about educational briefings with new information. I want to suggest some um, amendments about the delegations. I want to ask council to consider a couple more items. 
to for inclusion. And I was also going to talk about the agenda. Now, I, I, I didn't get your comment at the beginning of the meeting. Am I allowed five minutes in total? Or am I allowed five minutes to talk about each item for which I have concerns? Um, the, so item 17.5 of our existing bylaw, procedural bylaw, no member shall speak to the question or in reply for longer than five minutes without approval for council. So it refers to the question being posed, the resolution. So if you had a hundred questions or items to discuss on this, it wouldn't be five minutes an item. We each have five minutes to talk about the resolution. Well, then I'm just going to talk uh, and you can start timing me as when I begin, just as many as I can get in, in five minutes. First one, I'm especially concerned about educational briefings. In December of 2016, I got a letter from the Manitoba Ombudsman, and the uh, CAO referred to this letter before second reading. It was the Ombudsman file 2015-0152, and this letter was in response to a complaint against the RM. The report said that a municipality has an obligation to, to conduct its business in public. The act, however, does not specifically address educational briefings or training sessions, and therefore educational briefing sections uh, or workshops could be held as long as council business is not discussed or advanced. And the Ombudsman concluded, we are of the view that the RM can conduct educational briefings if careful consideration is afforded to ensure that subjects discussed are for educational or training purposes and that councillors are mindful that municipal business is not to be deliberated or advanced at these briefings. The purposes of this proposed bylaw 2020-13 are fourfold to receive information, to receive information from budget presentations, to receive training for discussion. To me, proposed changes go beyond ensuring subject discussed are for educational and training purposes. The Ombudsman made two administrative suggestions. The first suggestion was that the RM provided to citizens with a general description of the subjects discussed at educational briefings. Our current bylaw says, notice of the educational briefing shall be posted in the municipal office and the municipal West website forthwith following notice to members of council. This statement has been deleted from the proposed bylaw. The proposed bylaw has removed all reference about informing the public about any part of educational briefings. The proposed bylaw disregards the Ombudsman's suggestion. The second Ombudsman's suggestion was that the RM clearly remind council members attending educational briefings that municipal business cannot be deliberated or markedly advanced. Neither the current proposed bylaw Neither the current nor the proposed bylaw addresses this ombudsman situation uh, suggestion. I do not believe procedural bylaw 2013 is ready for third reading. An ombudsman report, file number 2015-0152, with specific suggestions exists. These specific suggestions are not reflected in the proposed bylaw. Giving third reading to the proposed procedural bylaw can be expected to result in complaints to the Ombudsman. Uh, I have a uh, uh, amendments to the delegations. 
I want to add to 12.1 at the end. The CAO shall include the topic and scope of any delegation proposal as part of the supporting materials made available to Council at least 72 hours preceding the meeting of Council. The rationale for this is to give Council background information to consider in advance of hearing the presentation. I'd like to add a new section that any resident or citizens group organization or association appearing as a delegation to solicit funding for a project that may benefit the municipality must come before council at a meeting open to the public. The rationale for this, taxpayers have the right to hear a proposal that will use municipal funds and possibly consume municipal staff time. I would like to amend section 12.2, starting after the comma in the section. The CAO will schedule delegations to be heard by council on a first come, first served basis. Delegations will be scheduled at the committee of the whole meeting held on the second Tuesday or at the regular meeting of council held on the fourth Tuesday of each month. The rationale for this is a matter of clarity and fairness for those people applying to come before council to make a delegation. The bylaw does not address what types of motions council members may propose at meetings. I think it should. And the bylaw does not address the process for council to receive reports from members who have attended meetings as a representative of council. I think it should address that. Now, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I wish, this has got nothing to do, I'm going to leave out my section on the agenda. I support Councillor Clyber's objections. I wish to add though, that council was told that a municipal lawyer recommended certain changes to the procedural bylaw regarding abstentions. I don't recall being told that the lawyer recommended changes to other sections of the bylaw. The section about educational briefings is a prime example. The section regarding agendas is another example. In fact, there are several other sections of the proposed bylaw that have been amended in substance, not simply to reduce redundancy or implement lawyers' recommendations. What process was used to come up with those substantial amendments? I don't know. Who proposed those amendments? I don't know. Council was not involved in reviewing the procedural bylaw prior to seeing the first reading of the bylaw. Changes were laid out. I have to wonder why the procedural bylaw was not discussed at a committee of the whole meeting. Committee of the whole meetings were created to provide opportunities to talk about important issues more fully and more openly. The procedural bylaw is an important bylaw. It's mandated by the province. In, in committee of the whole, council members would have been able to suggest amendments themselves, present rationales and hear other members' opinions without a time limit. Consensus may have been reached. The need for debate at readings may have been eliminated or at least cut down significantly. Do I have any time left? At eight minutes. Okay, I don't. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bichetti. No, oh, I've made all my changes to the last meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess I, I'm going to ask the CAO just to speak to comments about legal and, and then I'll share my own comments for discussion. There were questions raised about uh, was legal consulted and where did the recommendations come from? 
Uh, Mr. CAO, can I pass that to you to address? Yes, uh, I'll just comment on the uh, well. I'll comment on two things that the you know that uh, Councillor Link had made a point that, uh, that maybe she didn't have the chance to participate uh, in changes or, or commenting on on these bylaws uh, when in fact we've spent a, a whole Saturday uh, on the first reading uh, looking at these bylaws. We spent uh, uh, you know a Monday night looking at these bylaws, so. Uh, the fact of the matter are we everyone did have a, a lot of time to to look at these uh, bylaws and prepared uh, and prepared feedback but in regards to uh, legal and our attorney that uh, that the attorney was uh, was involved in and in, in reviewed uh, all the the aspects of the procedural bylaw we would always have our legal involved in in, in matters like this uh, any change that that's involved in these bylaws, the lawyer for West St. Paul has seen. Thank you, Mr. CEO. I appreciate everybody's comments for discussion. Um, for my own comments, um, I just want to be clear about how the process emerged for changing specifically uh, item 7.3. The items um, to change for the uh, agenda adding uh, agenda items coming from council to mayor versus coming to the CAO. Uh, comments have been made that this is a quorum, that making a decision about what items go on an agenda constitutes a quorum. Uh, decisions have been made for years on what items go on an agenda uh, by administration on what they need council to approve. Our meetings are laid out as per our regular agenda for um, to approve checks and payments for new business, for bylaw review, for policy and procedure review, and those are laid out. Those decisions are made behind the scenes. As a mayor, I make decisions to call a special meeting. Um, that does not require a quorum. Comments are made about how decisions are made. Some decisions are not made with all council. Making a decision about what items go on an agenda being left up to the CAO uh, has clearly not worked recently. We have gone years where council members bring forward their requests to the CAO and an overwhelming 99% of those um, are added to an agenda. I can't think of a time in the previous term where an item was not added to an agenda. Recently, however, our CAO, uh, through legal advice, did not add three items to an agenda. Those items were related to a conflict of interest, a request for service, and a DA. When he did not add those items to the agenda, Legal input from our lawyer was shared. Uh, information was shared that a council member could not have preferential treatment and that an item would not be added, that the appropriate way to access that information would be to simply email the CAO to get that information. Request for service, again, preferential treatment and not following process and procedure. In terms of laying out what kinds of items would not be appropriate to add to an agenda, items that violate conflict of interest legislation, items that violate our existing policies and procedures that as a council or previous councils, we have voted on. If we have a request for service process and that request for service process is submit to the municipality, call or email your counselor, and get or get a hold of the mayor or call the CAO, letting them process that, register that complaint um, and follow up, that's what should be followed. But I also wanna emphasize that council should be working as a team. So if a council member receives a call from a resident outside of their ward, they should call the ward counselor and say, counselor so-and-so, I've received a call from this ward. Could you give me an update on what's going on? And that council should be more than happy to update that other counselor on what's going on. The first step should not be rushing to add items to an agenda to discuss matters without first having the courtesy to contact that counselor. Second, following up by email to our CAO and saying, this is not within my ward, but as a counselor, we represent all wards and I'm bringing this forward. Could you give me an update? So I'm really happy to report that the CAO, once this request for an added agenda was brought to his attention, 
denied the request with legal advice, shared with council an update on the progress of that issue with every member of council to make sure that we were fully informed, and most importantly, to be able to share that information back with the residents, which is ultimately why I believe a councillor would want something on an agenda. I hope their intent is to, to make things better for our residents. So the current way that things have been going um, and to be making accusations and sending nasty emails and threatening emails to our CAO who's refusing items on an agenda, violation of conflict of interest, or challenge the policies and procedures around DAs or requests for service that we have in place is not appropriate. As a council, why are we approving policies and procedures to then undermine them, ignore them, and try and push items on an agenda that are not respectful to our colleagues, that are not respectful to our staff? So that is why that's bringing forward. Comments are being made about minority on council. It really saddens me because, again, um, yeah, I like to believe every member of council, and I, I, I do believe, comes with the idea of reviewing the information and voting on what they feel is best for the municipality as a whole. That is what the Municipal Act says, that is what our oath said and that says, and that is what our code of conduct says. So to suggest that there's a majority or minority on council, if members are feeling they need to vote the certain way that someone else on council is voting, that's disappointing. Um, issues that are important to our community come forward. Councillors address and respect all wards and all residents um, and we look at every issue at face value. In terms of cen cen censoring uh, comments being made, um, I don't think code of conduct and, and uh, respecting our staff, respecting our colleagues, respecting the policies and procedures that are in place, and respecting conflict of interest legislation, it is censoring. Is censoring. Um, we have an obligation to follow those practices. And, and we've all agreed to that, we've signed off on that. And so to, to be pressuring staff, to be sending threatening emails when agenda items don't make it on is absolutely unacceptable. So I'm, I'm proud of this change that's being made, that it can come to the mayor, um, which would then have a reason uh, to explain why this item would not be added. And the reason would be similar to reasons that have already been given to a councillor. There won't be preferential treatment for council members. We will not be discussing personal lawsuits on an agenda. Um, we, you know, there, we will not be uh, going against policy regarding development agreements when those are approved by council and we're supporting staff who, who we ask to follow policy and procedure. So to say that it is censoring councillors who are demanding that staff don't follow policy um, is ridiculous. In terms of education briefings and the other issues raised, um, I'm proud of a council that, of a staff that wants to inform council. I'm proud that we're educated um, and that they give us information to help us make better decisions. In terms of providing information ahead of time, those are learning opportunities. What I would love to see is council members, if they have lots of changes that they want to be made, and suggestions are being made about advance notice. I, I'm really proud of the amount of time that we've spent going over these bylaws, hours, just hours of three separate meetings and three separate readings, weeks in advance, days in advance to, to talk about it. But if council members have substantive changes that they'd like to make to these bylaws, they should show respect to their colleagues and share that information. Um, we ask for staff to give us lots of advance notice on meetings or by sharing those bylaws in advance for review. And if a councillor has made substantive changes, those should be shared in advance and not dropped on everybody. I think that that's a common courtesy if that is what is being requested. I'm proud of the changes being made. I hear what council members have said and everyone is able to vote based on uh, how they believe this bylaw um, will help and represent our residents and guide our procedures. And we have all had our opportunity to speak. Recognizing that everyone's had an opportunity to speak to this bylaw, I will read the resolution. Be it resolved that bylaw 2020-13, being a bylaw of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul to regulate the proceedings and conduct of the council and the committees thereof, and repeal bylaw 2018-24 be read a third and final time, signed, sealed, and therefore passed as a bylaw of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bichetti, seconded by Councillor Bragg. Any further discussion on the issues? We can go around the table one more time. Councillor Kleiber. Okay. 
can't hear Councillor Kleiber. I know we can't we can't hear Councillor Kleiber. To put me on the unmute me. Unmute okay. me. Go ahead. Yep. I, I want to make it clear to the residents of West St. Paul that I have never asked for an agenda item that has had a conflict of interest. I've proven that with my email. If there, if Seven Oaks has ever come to our table, I've recused myself from those votes. So I want to make that perfectly clear. Thank you. Councillor Buffetti, any further comments on this? No, thank you. No, nope. Councillor Craig, any further comments? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Craig. Councillor Link? Yes, I would like the public to recognize that I have been soundly and roundly criticized in the past for emailing with suggestions regarding bylaws. Uh, I can say I emailed uh, three letters to council in regarding to the extension, the Rossmore extension. I was thoroughly criticized for that. And that was certainly not the only instance where I was criticized for emailing my ideas to council for their consideration. Thank you, Councillor Link. I would have to disagree. Um, I was quite pleased to see you share your comments and suggestions uh, for wholesale changes to our uh, dog bylaw that resulted in a lot of positive changes that Laney had in advance and was able to share with council. Um, so I disagree that you've been criticized. In fact, your comments have been embraced and uh, Ms. Shaw spent hours and hours including your suggestions on the dog bylaw for council to review and consider. Um, so I just would like you to be fair to staff in the fact that they have fully accepted your changes in advance and given an opportunity to review them is, is helpful. Staff, I don't want to get into a discussion uh, about lawsuits Thank you. Um, and comments there. Um, I I don't know what you're talking about that fellow councillors haven't accepted your emails. So um, we've reviewed a number of suggestions. We've received input from you on a garden project. We've received lots of information and input from you. Um, and those have resulted in positive changes in the municipality. And so uh, I'm not sure your colleagues would appreciate those comments. Um, confidential letters were sent regarding a lawsuit. I don't feel comfortable speaking about that, Councillor Kleiber. I do know that um, you were informed that council would not show you preferential treatment by including that. I do know you sat in camera during a discussion about the ombudsman report. Um, I, I won't show preferential treatment. We have comments. Um, if you're comfortable with, with sharing the email that was shared to you in confidence, denying your request um, to have that on an agenda, um, that is up to you. But um, that letter referred to us not being able to show a counselor preferential treatment by addressing your per personal issue at a council meeting on an agenda. Uh, that is what that email refers to. Um, that we have to be mindful that there is an outstanding lawsuit. So your request to discuss that uh, was denied. And honestly, I feel very uncomfortable that you wanted to discuss your lawsuit at tonight's council meeting related to this. Um, uh, just to also clarify a point of miscommunication on your part, um, that lawsuit uh, or the ombudsman complaint against the municipality was not supported. Uh, the comments about Red River planning not providing enough notification was verified. So the RM of West St. Paul was cleared and the ombudsman said that we did act properly. Red River Planning did not provide enough notice. But again, um, you know, th this is a change to be made to make sure that people's personal lawsuits and, and personal items are not added. Those are the only comments that I have as well. We've gone around the table for a second time. I have a mover and a seconder. Um, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? So I have. I could not votes. hear the question. Sorry. I'll call the, the question again. 
So I've read the resolution. I have a mover and a seconder. Can everybody hear me? I will call the question. All those in favor? Opposed. We lost your sound again. Thank you. Sorry. Opposed? All right. So I'll call one more time just to be sure. Uh, I will call for the question. All those in favor, if you can hear me now. All those in favor? Opposed? Of what? Of the resolution that I read and the mover and the seconder that I had for the third reading of the bylaw council oh. link. All yes. right. Opposed. Thank you. And that is carried. And I will read the resolution to adjourn the meeting. Be it resolved that this meeting of council stand adjourned. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bruschetti, seconded by Councillor Prag. Any discussion, hearing and seeing none? I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Good night, everyone, and thank you for everyone joining us live or watching us recorded on our YouTube. Thank you. Good night. Good night.